The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Chapter 7, verses 37 to 39. On the last and greatest day of the feast, Jesus stood up and exclaimed, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture says, rivers of living water will flow from within him. He said this in reference to the spirit that those who came to believe in him were to receive. There was, of course, no spirit yet because Jesus had not yet been glorified. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Hallelujah. 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 My dear young brothers and sisters, I was going to a village nearby. The visitor house where there was a sick person. I was going to pray for the sick person. I knew the village, but I did not know the exact location of the house I was going to. I wanted to ask someone, and that's when I saw a few young people coming that way. Very fine, pleasant young people. I asked them about the whereabouts of that house and they very kindly explained to me where exactly the location of that house is. I liked them very much, very wonderful, very pleasant young people. I asked them, where are you going? They said, Father, we went for the Holy Mass. Oh, I said, wonderful. And I asked them another question. What did you get from the church? What did you get from the Holy Eucharistic celebration? When I asked that question to them, they looked at each other, puzzled at my question. And one of them answered me, Father, to get something from the Holy Mass? Oh no, Father. Today Sunday. We went to fulfill the Sunday obligation. My dear friends, I felt a little sad about that answer. They went to fulfill the Sunday obligation. They wasted a beautiful celebration fulfilling the Sunday obligation. They did not get anything from the Holy Mass. They went in, now they came back, they came back exactly as they went into the church. They did not get anything. Nothing changed in them. They were the same as they went in and as they came out. My friends, let me ask you this question. You were we all of us were entering into this Eucharistic celebration. What did you expect from this Eucharistic celebration? Or every day there is a Holy Mass. Today also there's a Holy Mass. What to get from the Holy Mass? Nothing special. We enter into the Holy Mass. We continue with the celebration. We call it a celebration though it is a meaningless ceremony for us, we come out of it exactly as we entered into it. The gospel today is very beautiful. Jesus was in the temple of Jerusalem. The feast of the tabernacles was going on in the temple. A very uh, solemn festival for the Jews. It was the harvest festival. And therefore, the people came in to offer 
their first fruits on the altar. First fruits means a part of the harvest they had in that season. It could be some grain or some vegetable or a little lamb or even some money. They would bring that little from their harvest. They would come in a line to the altar and they would offer that little in their hands on the altar and they would go back. And this ceremony lasted for seven days. And Jesus was in the corner looking at everyone coming in, everyone going out. One thing Jesus noted, the people came in, they did the offering, they went out, they went out exactly as they came in. They came in sad, they came in sick, they came in limping, they came in angry and anxious. They did the offering, yes, but they went back, limping, sick, sad, and tense. The offering did not change them. The altar did not change them. They were exactly the same before the offering and after the offering. An offering that does not transform the offerer is an empty ceremony. It's a useless ritual. And Jesus was tired looking at this empty, meaningless ritual for seven days. On the last day, he stood up and exclaimed, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. If anyone is sad, let him come to me and be comforted. If anyone is sick, let him come to me and be healed. If anyone is empty, let him come to me and be filled. Rivers of living water is flowing from within me. Hallelujah. Then all of us say hallelujah. 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 My sisters and brothers, what Jesus was promising was a new type of sacrifice. A sacrifice that changes the one who offers the sacrifice. A sacrifice in which we offer ourselves in the hands of the Lord and we are bathed in the rivers of living water flowing out of the heart of Jesus. And Jesus was promising the Holy Eucharist. In fact, in the previous chapter, now this is in John chapter 7, the previous chapter, John chapter 6, Jesus already promised the Holy Spirit. He told the people, I will give you my body for you to eat and my blood for you to drink. You must eat of my flesh and drink of my blood. And eating of my body and drinking of my blood, you must have life and life in the full. My flesh, body is food indeed. My blood is drink indeed. I will give you my body and my blood for you to feed on. That you may thrive with life, life in the full, joy in the full. I will give you myself as your food and your drink. You know, some of the Jews who were listening to Jesus, they could not understand what Jesus uh, was saying. And they began to murmur, how can this man give us his body to eat and his blood to drink? And they walked away from Jesus. This is a hard saying. We can't understand. We can't accept. They walked away from Jesus. Even some of the close followers of Jesus, when they walked away, even they walked away, we can't understand what he says. And Jesus did not call them back. Very interesting. Very significant. A leader would want followers. A leader will do anything, say anything to gather followers. But Jesus did not want to gather followers who would not understand him, who would not believe in his love. Jesus did not call them back. Rather, he turned to the 12 disciples and asked them, Simon, are you also going away? 
if you want you may go but i do not take my word back i do not take my promise back understand me you are dying and i want you to live understand me you are sad you are sick you are broken i want you to be built up in love i want you to thrive in life and the only way is to eat of my body and drink of my blood do you understand my love that wants to give myself to you for you to feed on if you don't understand if you don't accept my love you also may go simon peter said to jesus master going away where to you have the words of eternal life they remained with jesus and these 12 disciples they had the great blessedness to eat of the body of jesus and drink of the blood of jesus when in the last supper jesus took the bread and said this is my body to be broken for you take it and eat it and then he took the cup of wine and said this is my blood to be shed for you take it and drink it they ate and drank of the body and blood of jesus in the form of bread and wine hallelujah 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 my dear sisters and brothers we are gathered together for this banquet of the lord but before any banquet there's a sacrifice this is sacrifice and that sacrifice was offered on the cross on the cross on the cross jesus offered himself you know often we imagine that jesus was um, betrayed and condemned and crucified and nobody did anything for him his disciples ran away from him and they were poor jesus a poor victim of human injustice and human torture no that's not true jesus said no one snatches my life away from me no i willingly offer my life for the for the salvation of my sheep jesus willingly offered himself for what the whole sacrifice of calvary was meant for one purpose to give us his own body to eat and his own blood to drink and that is what we celebrate at this altar hallelujah hallelujah and what are we to do we need to surrender we need to sacrifice and what are we sacrificing what are we surrendering we surrender everything sad everything sick everything unholy everything painful in our hearts to the lord that's what jesus offered in the hands of the heavenly father his brokenness his body was broken his body was flogged and bruised and broken and bleeding that burning pain he offered to the heavenly father his heart his mind was broken remember jesus said my soul is sorrowful unto death that sorrow that agony he offered to the heavenly father and we join jesus at this altar we join jesus in offering ourselves and what are we to offer you know a um, story is told of saint jerem as you know saint jerem was the most uh, famous bible scholar the one who translated bible uh, into latin from the original uh, greek and hebrew well uh, saint jerem a famous saint he lived in a cave in bethlehem even today that cave is there uh, just near the basilica of the nativity of jesus uh, saint jerem uh, was praying and the lord appeared to him and the lord asked him jerem give me yourself and jerem said my god all that i have is yours all that is mine is yours i offer you my talents my scholarship my knowledge i offer you all that i have 
I have hardly anything and yet whatever I have is what I have received from you. I give it all to you. And Jesus said, Jerem, your knowledge, your scholarship, your talents, that's what I have given you. Give me what is yours. Jerem said, I got my body, my soul, my mind, I offer it to you. And Jesus said, Oh, Jerem, your body, your mind, your soul, so what I created and gave you, what is it that is yours? Jerem was in tears. My God, what do I have? What am I? I have nothing that you have not given me. And Jesus asked him, Jerem, what about your hot temper? What about your weaknesses? What about your aches and your ailments? What about your shortcomings? What about your painful memories of your past? What about your anxiety about the future? With tears flowing down his eyes, Jerem said, my Lord, yes, that's not what you have given me. That's what I have. That's what I am. I surrender. I place it all in your hands. In every holy mass. The Lord is asking you, give it all to me. You know, St. Luke. When St. Luke describes for us the Last Supper, it's a beautiful verse. In the beginning of that description, St. Luke says, Jesus wanted to eat the Last Supper with them. And Jesus invited his disciples for the Last Supper. The last time he was eating with his disciples. And Jesus told them, when they were gathered together, Jesus told them something beautiful. He said, I have desired with a great desire to eat this supper with you. Before every Eucharistic celebration, that's what Jesus is telling us. I have been waiting for you to feed you. I have been waiting for you to fill you. Because I know how sad you are. I know how sick you are. I know how broken you are. Jesus knows everything, my dear sisters and brothers. Everything happening to us. Matthew 10, 30. Matthew 10, 30. The Lord God said, even our hair that falls from our head is all counted by him. Our hair falling down from our head, such a trifle, even such a little detail does not escape the attention of our God. Psalm 56, 8, I have counted your afflictions. I have collected your tears in my heart. That's what God is busy with. What is God busy with? God is busy counting. God is busy noting. God is busy looking at everything going wrong with our lives. And God is busy. Romans 8, 28. Romans 8, 28. God is busy turning everything to our good. For God to turn everything to our good, we need to surrender. He knocks. Revelation 3.20. Jesus said, Behold, I stand knocking at the door of your heart. If you open the door to me, I will come in. The Lord is waiting to come in. Every day, something or other goes wrong with our lives. Every day, some guilt or other begins to ache in our hearts. Every day, some humiliation or other, some failure or other. Every day, some moment of anger or other. Every day, things are going wrong with our lives. And what do we do with them? We say, Jesus is present in the Holy Eucharist. Really? We believe that Jesus is present in the Holy Eucharist. There's a tabernacle in the Old Testament God was present in the tabernacle and the people used to turn to the tabernacle and realize my God is present there. In the New Testament today in the church, in the Holy Mother Church, the Mother Church has built churches, tabernacles, 
in our midst in every village one two three in every town in every town five six seven there are churches and these churches will tell us there's a tabernacle it's a presence of god the lord is present in the tabernacle the lord is present in the eucharistic bread we believe this but what is, what does that belief mean to me what does that belief the real presence of jesus mean to you and to me well we need to ask the question the lord is present in the holy eucharist but the lord is present in the holy eucharist for what the purpose of his presence in the holy eucharist he wants to be present to you my brother to you my sister to your hair falling down your head to everything going wrong with your life to every pain of humiliation to every anger of being insulted to every guilt aching in your heart the lord is present to you it's not an absent god that we believe in we believe in a god who is always present always waiting always knocking at the door of our heart at that moment of failure at the moment of sadness at that moment of anger waiting to come in waiting to enter into our heart and to turn everything to our good and the lord does it in a beautiful way here on this altar when we come here the lord is present i've been waiting for you the lord is telling us i've been waiting for you at this altar at the end of the last supper one more thing jesus said do this in memory of me so we come here to celebrate how do we celebrate by remembering jesus said do this in memory of me and what do we remember at this altar we celebrate by remembering what do we remember at this altar we remember what the lord did for us what the lord did for us he offered himself he offered himself on the cross for what to become food for us to become food for us and that's what he offered himself for to become food for us and that's what we remember and thus we realize at this altar we realize how precious i am my brother my sister how precious you are how precious are you what is your value you know this is a world that measures value by the money by the money we have in the bank by the dress by the brand of the shirt we wear by the brand of the car we drive by the brand of the pen we have in the pocket we measure by the thick bank balance if i have no bank balance i have no value but but how precious am i to my god my god does not look at me and measure me and value me by my money by my color by my talents by my beauty my god measures me by his love for me who am i i'm a son i'm a daughter of my dear god and my god is all the time following everything happening to me and to you everything happening to us and the lord wants to us to understand how precious we are to him was so precious he opted to die for us when is it that love opts to die for the beloved when the beloved is so precious when the beloved is so dear when the beloved is so valuable and we are so valuable you and i you and i we are so precious to our god he opted to die for us and to become food for us become food for us and that's how we are loved so precious we are to god hallelujah hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah.